Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on where you're at out here on this fine Saturday. It is the Earthmaster out here, about 12.25 p.m. California time. September 21st, 2024 is the date. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe here. If I can click the right one, there we go. It is a 2.1 across the area of Nevada, it looks like. A little bit of activity stirring up across the Aleutian Trench as well this morning with a 5.4 earthquake. Fairly moderate earthquake here across this area. 27 miles deep here into the subduction zone of the Aleutian Trench. Uh, one of the larger earthquakes today. Let's see if that's the largest one. Uh, it is for at least for the 24, uh, 21st time period. 5.4 along the Aleutian Trench. All right, let's see what we got here for California activity. Uh, we will be going down here to the Malibu area. Also checking out a couple other regions down south here as well for uh, uh, geological purposes there. I appreciate some of the donations coming in and we will check out that landslide uh, down there around the, um, the area of Southern California where they've been having that uh, new land or new beaches uh, kind of form out there. I've, I gotta look into it specifically but uh, our main focus is going to be here across the Malibu Coast Fault. And, um, but we'll work our way around the area. Earthquake activity today. Uh, goodness, what have we got north here? Just after midnight, one second after midnight here, 2.9. That is uh, 13 miles deep into the Cascadia subduction zone here, the southern end. Uh, where we are seeing a handful of smaller quakes in the vicinity as well. Got a, looks like a 2.0. And a couple other earthquakes here from yesterday uh, into this extreme southern end of the Cascadia. Nothing big going on for now. Hopefully uh, it'll stay that way, but eventually that won't be the case. Southern California, a handful of earthquakes out here as well. One earthquake from yesterday for a 2.6. Aside from that, most of the movement today on the lighter side of things. Uh, pretty much microquake activity out here in the last hour or so. Uh, nothing big. A little bit of swarming specifically right here on the San Andreas Fault. That's a little interesting. We haven't really seen too much swarming directly on it. Uh, it is just north of the Desert Hot Springs area along the southern segment here of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, let's see what we got. A few of these from yesterday and a handful from today as well. So it's a little interesting there, right on the San Andreas Fault. A lot of times we'll see swarmings out, uh, swarming out here across the San Jacinto Fault Zone uh, or a little conjunction here with the, the um, northern end of the San Jacinto with the San Andreas Fault. But today, well, that uh, activity is on the San Andreas Fault and a little separate swarming over here around the Loma Linda area, Moreno Valley. Uh, so two distinct swarming areas to watch. Again, that one's right on the San Andreas Fault. Goodness, the south branch, southern branch, capable of producing an 8.1. And that area has not seen any sufficient movement in over 300 years. So with all the ongoing act activity here recently, it's good to be on guard. There's a lot to check out down here in Southern California uh, in terms of uh, plate stress and the potential for some bigger earthquake activity out here. I think they're having a great California shakeout here in October. Hopefully a real one doesn't. Can you imagine if a real one would actually happen during the uh, the shakeout? That would be uh, that would be interesting to say the least. One earthquake outside of Tonopah, Nevada, 2.1, and there's that little swarming area from yesterday, right around the Walker Lake area, uh, just north of Hawthorne, Nevada. Here, a couple smaller earthquakes now. Over the last month or so, past six weeks, we've noticed a, a decent amount of swarming, roughly from about the Walker Lake area due uh, southeast here towards Las Vegas in a linear fashion recently. <clears throat> it's calmed down here in the last few days. Southern California in general has um, really haven't seen a whole lot of elevated activity out here in the last few days, but a uh, little quiet periods here or common in between elevated events. But, uh, you know, definitely, definitely watching this area right here. That's a little bit swarming specifically on that branch. Goodness. Uh, further up north, Pacific Northwest, relatively quiet. Nothing going on here through uh, Yellowstone for now. We will uh, we'll double check that, see what we have for the uh, 
Maple Creek seismograph station out here. That's going to be the uh, earthquake that struck a couple hours ago in the Aleutian Trench, if I'm correct. Let me check here, see what the time is on this earthquake. Yeah, that was 1021, so just about two hours ago. That would coincide with the two-hour time frame here uh, for the Yellowstone seismograph station. Uh, it just goes to show you how these earthquakes there, even though they're thousands of miles away from each other in terms of location, uh, Yellowstone here to the Aleutian Trench where we've seen that 5.3 is showed up though on this seismograph station fairly nicely. But Yellowstone itself, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity popping off there for now. Oil fields out in Texas getting hit outside of Pecos, Texas. Nothing major going on across the eastern portion of the country for now. And um, let's see what we got here. The Kermadec Trench from yesterday, that's the majority of the earthquake activity there. Uh, looks like New Zealand's got a little bit of swarming down here across the southern end, South Island area, with a bunch of three stirring up out there. Let's go check out the uh, GeoNet servers here real quick and see what's going on down uh, towards that area of the world. I'm going to go to all magnitudes here and just give a little visual, see what we got. Actually, those are super small microquakes. I just want to see 2.0. 3.6 South Island area. There's a four pointer from a couple days ago. Uh, but we're definitely seeing a little bit of earthquake activity out there, South Island area, more noticeable today. I'm just kind of seeing if they have it on the seismograph stations here. There's a couple of those three stirring up in the last six hours, it looks like. Nothing big, but uh, a little bit of noticeable uptick there across this area of the plate boundary. And, you know, I could say. Uh, they're definitely well overdue for some larger scale activity as well. There's many areas around the globe that are, you know, fairly ripe for uh, larger movement. And New Zealand, definitely one of them. Uh, clustering going on across the typical crunch zone out here. Philippines area into the Indonesia Islands area today. Mostly twos and threes. Scattered out and about up here across the area of the Himalayas. Nothing big going on here for now. Uh, some movement up into uh, the China area, it looks like, way up north here. Or maybe Mongolia region up here in that area. Middle America trench area of the world here, clustering going on. Twos and threes and a bunch of fours there. A lot of that from yesterday, though. Uh, a couple smaller earthquakes down across the Peruchili Trench as well. Uh, that's going to be out in this little fracture zone here 4.4 from uh, well just within the last couple hours there a little bit of migration southward it looks like here along the plate boundary so no major earthquake activity right now but uh, you know it's it's not always consistently fives and sixes out here you know it's it definitely comes in waves and um, all it takes is a little trigger somewhere to set off the domino effect around the uh, any plate out here. So we'll just kind of watch it and see how uh, things play out today. California, like I said, not really seeing too much larger movement. All this microquake activity, but these little individual swarms here is uh, interesting. There's a fairly recent earthquake in the last hour for a 1.9 the Punta Hills Thrust Fault, this is from, uh, well, goodness, it looks like this is from today as well. 1.3 and a 1.4, about 9 o'clock this morning. Uh, yesterday, we had a handful of earthquakes out here as well. 2.3 and some other smaller quakes. And, of course, if we were to go back further than that in the last six weeks, uh, a lot of activity stirred up out here on the Puente Hill Stress Fault. Made quite a bit of national news here and uh, put a little bit of fear uh, and uh, rattled some nerves out here for the Los Angeles area because that fault system runs uh, due underneath Los Angeles. And there's even some uh, concern here that it's extended towards the Hollywood area. So that would uh, create a... Uh, a damaging earthquake directly underneath Los Angeles, would, which would be worse. Say, for example, they have a 7.5 here on that fault. Runs every couple thousands of years or so. Um, more damage would consist from that 7.5 than, say, an 8.1 over here due to proximity, right? If you're directly on top of a fault, 
A 7.5 is going to be a lot worse for these folks here than, say, an 8.1 over here across the plate boundary itself. Obviously, an 8.1 would create a lot of damage in itself, but uh, not as much as a 7.5 in proximity here to the Los Angeles area. So a couple more earthquakes there on that region today. Nothing big. But got to remember, even though these are microquakes here, they're still earthquakes, regardless on if we put a little cap on them saying 2.5 is considered an earthquake and everything underneath that is not. It's still an earthquake, uh, regardless. Space weather activity on this Saturday, fairly neutral. Not a whole lot of flaring going on here. I had my hopes up probably a little bit too high for 38.25. The last significant flare was that X flare over here, X 4.5, if I remember right, with a subsequent CME. And then a couple days later, we had uh, some G4 class storming here on Earth from that uh, full halo CME that was produced. Now that sunspot is uh, no longer uh, diminishing quite rapidly, it looks like. We are left with a couple little measly sunspots out here and really nothing of any concern in terms of a stronger flaring activity. Uh, I wouldn't doubt if we maybe maybe might see a sea flare activity, but uh, that's about it until we get some further active regions coming around the bend. We do have this area right here not looking super promising for uh, stronger flares, but there is uh, a handful on the far side here of the sun. Uh, this is yesterday. It's about a day old, so we do have one, two, er uh, two areas of large pro uh, large coverage here on the far side. This is the far side of the sun. These sunspots working their way this way towards the eastern limb. Here's our newer sunspot that's just uh, kind of peeking around here. Uh, these two regions here might uh, be active. It's hard to tell. Obviously, uh, there is, you know, some large sunspots, but we won't know exactly how much uh, complexity is, is associated with those sunspots and they come until they come around the bend. So we'll well, just wait and see. Right now, flare threat has dropped like a rock. 5% for X flare, M flare at 30, C flare around 99% chance or so. And really, those are fairly modest uh, measurements there, forecasts. No major roars in the forecast here, folks. Let's talk about hurricane activity. It uh, looks like something is going to be stirring up there in the Gulf of Mexico as we head towards the end of next week here. Staying fairly consistent with a tropical uh, formation down there. A uh, little uncertain on to how strong this is going to get and the location. But right now, it's anywhere from about Louisiana over here to the uh, Florida area. Uh, most of the weather models have been fairly consistent with the idea that uh, that's the path that this tropical system is going to take. And um, they're picking up on it a little bit as well here. Well, really not showing anything out here right now. There's a couple different disturbances way out in the Atlantic. But this one's going to pop up out of the blue um, down here around the Gulf of Mexico southward. Uh, again, this is a ways out. We'll get a better idea here in terms of location and strength once, uh, I'd probably say about Tuesday or so, things should rap rapidly intensify or uh, take a different turn in terms of formation out here. But We'll see what happens. Definitely uh, might want to start preparing, uh, gathering some supplies and stuff like that because it looks like it could be a fairly decent hurricane uh, that would be coming into the uh, Panhandle of Florida area. Uh, anywhere down here should be on guard. Again, we'll keep a closer eye on that as we get uh, a little bit closer to that time frame. And then after that, goodness, <laughs> that's ways out there. That's uh, into the almost the second week here of October with another strong hurricane. This one's fairly large and massive in terms of coverage, soaking up the whole Gulf of Mexico out here uh, towards the 7th of October. But this is a ways out. Uh, but I do like to watch these weather models and see if there's some type of consistency here in agreement within each run. But that's that's way far out. Uh, even you know this event here for Friday, Thursday night, Friday, is a ways out as well. But uh, we'll keep checking back on that. Uh, severe weather today, though, a little bit of slight risk category here across eastern New Mexico, portions of Texas as well. Uh, there is a chance of some tornado activity down there today as well. 5% chance there in the um, burnt red color 
Uh, green here is a 2% chance either way if you're within this region. Keep your eye on the sky there. Could be seeing uh, a little bit of rotating water vapor. Some wind and some big time hail. Texas and uh, New Mexico here famous for their large hail and that is no exception here today. A little bit of forecasted large hail events for this area as well for today. Seismograph stations here pretty quiet. Um, again, we'll watch things here. Uh, in California, there's not uh, no major movement yet, but things could def definitely get stirred up here uh, throughout the day. We'll be watching that, and of course, if anything happens out here, we will be live. Well, we're live right now, but we'll be back uh, to do an update if anything major happens. We'll catch you guys out here. Enjoy your Saturday. Of course, always be prepared. And um, appreciate the donations here that the folks have been donating. Uh, some folks donating uh, a few bucks there, maybe for a coffee down there. For the ride down there, it's about a seven and, seven and a half hour drive here from where I live down to the Malibu area. And then, of course, a little bit further south uh, for the, um, the other region here where that landslide activity is taking place. But I'm going to go down there. Me and Missy Mimi is going to take a, a trip down there. We're going to leave super early in the morning. I'll let you guys know exactly when uh, as we get a little bit closer to that time period. But it will be next week here, uh, this week coming up. And, uh, again, appreciate the uh, donations there. A couple of folks uh, sent some on PayPal. And, of course, you can always donate it here on this video, on the update video, as a super chat, super thanks or also on the live stream so however you wish to donate whether it's a dollar five dollars ten dollars anything helps out um and we definitely appreciate it so either way we'll be down there next week uh looking at a few areas and uh reporting back on it documenting stuff down there have a good day we'll catch you guys back out here later on this evening for the saturday night update unless something major happens that is have a good day